We want to bless the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful that you've given us a chance we can gather together and just listen to your word. As I bring your word, Lord, I pray that I'll decrease as you increase and that your word will find space in our hearts, O God, and bring change to us in Jesus' name. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take a few minutes just to bring God's word to us. And if we can read the book of Jonah, chapter 1, um, we can read from verse 1 to... I know it's a whole big chapter 1 to 17, but we will read and stop at some point. Because I know that this is a book that has been read by very many people. Because the story they are in is very exciting. And it's amazing how a fish can swallow a human being. You keep wondering kwani huku kuna kuaga kubwa aje mpaka ikameza binadamu mzima. And so we are going to read. Verse 1 says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, and a line, he paid the fare and went down into it to go, down, to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his God. And every man cried out to who? To his God. So they had gods. And threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship, um, had laid down and was fast asleep. So he's not only going down towards Tarshish, but even when he got into the ship, he went down. Mm -hmm. So the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. These guys are wondering, they've been calling to their own individual gods and nothing is happening. And so they find someone sleeping down in the ship, in the deck. And it's only this person who is not calling to his God. So they are challenging him to call on his God. They're saying, arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Verse 7. And they say to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know for uh, whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they say to him, please tell us for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? Look at all those series of questions. It's like they're investigating him. <laughs> so he said to them, I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they say to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may become for us? For the sea was growing more temptuous. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know this great tempest is because of me. 
Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to the land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord, underline that, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Bonus, if you will. Hallelujah. A story is told <laughs> of a teacher who went into the classroom one day and he asked, he, uh, she asked her, her pupils to name the biggest animals that they have ever known. And so some of them had only seen a cow so for them a cow was the biggest animal some who had had the privilege of going to the, uh, to the uh, wilderness had seen an elephant and so they said an elephant but there was this boy who was quiet all along and so at some point he said the big fish and so the teacher asked him which big fish and the boy said the one that swallowed Jonah. And the teacher was like, no, there is no fish that can swallow a human being. And the boy was like, no, but I've read it in my Bible. That there is a fish, a big fish that swallowed a man by the name Jonah. And the teacher said, no, that thing is not true. And then the, the boy said, When I go to heaven, I will ask Jonah whether it was true. And then the teacher said, What if Jonah is not in heaven? Then the boy said, Then when you go to hell, you'll ask him. Praise the name of the Lord. The story of Jonah. As an interesting story. It's one of the minor prophet books. And when you look at other books, uh, the, the prophetic books that are written, the prophets would be writing about things that were to happen in the future. But this book is a little bit different. Because the prophet is writing about his own disobedience. He is bringing forth challenges that he went through because of disobedience. It is indicating more about what Jonah did than what Jonah said. Now the book of Jonah is a lot about disobedience. And our topic today is God's mercy. God's mercy. The name Jonah means a dove or a pigeon. Jiwa. Jiwa. A, a dove or a pigeon. I'm a pigeon. I understand. I've, I've always heard some people calling it Dutura. <laughs> is that the name? <laughs> it's normally referred to as a bird that is harmless. In my mother tongue, we call it akuru. 
it's normally associated with peace. And so the book of Jonah is not a fictitious book. It's a story about a real person. Whom the Lord spoke to and gave an assignment. But he looked at the assignment and he thought, I am going to run away from God. Just like at times most of us when we are given an assignment that we think is so enormous we choose to run away from the purposes of God because we think we may not be able to be fit enough or adequate enough for the same assignment and so we look for the easier way out Jonah was being sent to a nation by the name Nineveh. Which is the current Iraq. That was where Jonah needed to go and preach. And call for repentance. And the place uh, where he was to Nineveh was about 500 miles away. But Jonah decides to to go and take a different route which was heading to a town by the name Tarshish and Tarshish is 25,000 miles away. So it was definitely farther than where God was sending him to. But why the disobedience? It was because the people of Nineveh had at one time really, really been a thorn in the flesh of the place, the Israelites. There was a time when they would capture the Israelites and hold them hostage and they would skin them alive. And so definitely Jonah was not going to preach to these people repentance or God's grace for that matter because of the things that they had done to the Israelites. They were the kind of a people whom the Israelites would rightly say that they'll be better off in hell. It's like when we are sitting in this place and maybe there are a people, a people group that have really, really been a thorn in your flesh. And now the Lord is telling you to go and preach to them salvation. And you're feeling like these people, we cannot share heaven together with them. That was why Jonah was disappearing from the presence of God. And when we go back to that scripture, Jonah chapter 1 again, we can have it projected and look at verse 3. The Bible says that but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of God. And so he went down to Joppa. Many times when we are disappearing from the presence of God, the first thing that happens is that we begin going down as it were. Because as a Christian, the Lord has set you high on heaven's table land. But when we begin running away from the purposes of God, you find life beginning to take a downward trend. The second thing we are getting from that scripture is that Jonah had to pay his own fare to get into the ship so that he can disappear from God. In other words, running from the presence of God is very expensive. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. 
And many times we run from the presence of God. Many times we blame storms that are coming into our lives, yet the storms could be there because we are running from the presence of God. He thought that the journey was going to be smooth all along. But he discovered that the more he went down, the more he got himself right into the middle of a storm. And he found himself into trouble. And then he did not get into that trouble alone. Even the people who were around him got into trouble because of him. There are times when we begin blaming storms that are in our lives. We start blaming the devil. Oh, the devil has done this, the devil has done the other. Yet when you critically look at things, it might not really be the devil who has plunged you into that storm. And by the way, I'm not saying that the devil cannot bring a storm. He can. But we find ourselves in the center really because of our disobedience or worse still there are those of us who find ourselves into a storm because of who is in our boat these other travelers did not have a problem but they find themselves in the middle of a storm because there was someone who was running away from the presence of God in their boat Ask your neighbor, are you going through a storm? Could it be there's someone in your boat? Ask them who is in your boat that is causing the storm. Up there, ask them, could you be the one who is causing the storm? Because many times as we are seated in this place, we are always trying to run away from God for one reason or another. Or we are carrying people who are running away from the presence of God. You remember the day when you were told leave that relationship alone. It is not in the Lord's will. Leave that business venture alone. It is not the one that the Lord would have you do. But maybe you looked at your parents and you thought Nini mulikuwa na rahayenu wacha you had your time to enjoy, let me also enjoy. And did you plant yourself into the center of a storm? You find yourself living in a relationship that is very abusive. And at that moment, you do not know what to do. Yet you, you are the one who walked in there when this person was not even born again. There are times when we bring storms right into our families simply because of disobedience and we have decided even to, to upload or to download apps on our phones that we know are going to plunge us into trouble. And so as a couple, love has gone out of the window. Why? Because there's normally a particular site in your phone that you love relating with more than you love relating with your spouse. You know what the Lord says about families, but you still go that direction. Apart from the apps that we have, <laughs> there are these contacts that you have kept in your phone. Some of them because you do not want your wife to know. 
you have written there um, the milk mama or because you do not want your husband to know kwa sababu ama pengine hutaki mume wako akajue unaandika mtu wa makaa you write the choco man and you know you are wondering at what point do you normally call mtu wa makaa and you are asking yourself when do you normally <laughs> so that just in case the phone rings when you are not there and your husband is there ataona mtu wa maka simu ikilia wakati hauko hapo ataona ni huyo the man the chako man and because of that tayari your family is in trouble you are in a storm as a marriage na kwa sababu ya hiyo um doa yako iko katika dhoruba you come to the ministry team members and you are being prayed for sunday in sunday out unakuja hapa kuombewa na wahudumu kila jumapili kila jumapili because that marriage is not working kwa sababu hiyo ndoa haiendi vizuri yet you do not want to delete mtu wa makaa ana hata hutaki ku kuondoa hiyo na habari ya huyo mtu praise the name of the lord na labona litukuzi jona found himself in a storm Jonah akajipata katika dhoruba. Praise the name of Jesus. And today I just want you to be in a reflective mood and ask yourself. Leo nataka ukaweze kutafakari. What kind of relationships have I gotten my, myself into and are they in the will of the Father? Nimepata mahusiano gani na yanalingana na mapenzi ya Mungu? Are they in the will of the Father? Yeah, yanalingana na mapenzi ya Mungu. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to believe today as we are sitting here. Nataka kuamini ya kwamba tunapoketi hapa. Most of us if not all tuko na simu, si ndio? Ah, wengi wetu tuko na simu. Hebu toa hiyo simu iangalie kwanza. Take out your phone and look at it. Iangalie si ni simu poa? Ah, it's a good phone. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ni simu poa, si ndio? Angalia hizo apps ziko hapo. Ah, look at the apps that are there. Bwana asifiwe. Because there are times when the Lord will provide a fish. Ah uh, kuna wakati <laughs> Mungu atapeana samaki. To come and swallow you so that you can be delivered. Ikaweza kuku akaweza kukumeza ndio ukaweza kukombolewa. As you still hold your phone. Ukiwa umeshika simu yako tu hivyo. My prayer is that ombi langu ni kwamba is that you will not allow yourself to go up to the extent where you have to be swallowed by the fish usiweke kujiachilia ukafike kiasi sehemu kwamba ni lazima ukaweza kumezwa na samaki so that you can be delivered ukaweza kukombolewa praise the name of jesus my prayer is that you will willingly get yourself out because if Jonah had not gone into that boat then they would not have thrown a lot of their properties into the sea. Mombi langu ni kwamba ukaweze kujitoa wewe kwa hiari yako kabla hujaweza kumezwa na samaki kwa sababu Jonah alifanya watu wengi hata wakaweza kupoteza kupoteza mali zao kwa sababu ya While you're still holding that phone. Ukiwa umeshika tu simu yako hivyo. Si tumezishika. Look at it critically. Angalia simu yako kwa akina. Do you value your family so much that you can delete that contact? Unadhamini familia yako hivi kwamba unaweza kuondoa hiyo namba. Because the only solution is not to pray about the contacts. Sio kuomba tu utaombea huyo mtu. Atina kemea na kemea katika jina la Yesu. No, you take it and delete it. Uchukue hiyo simu na ukaweze kuondoa hiyo na habari ya huyo. Praise the name of the Lord. Ni uichukue na uifanye nini? You delete. Ukaweze kuondoa. Bwana asifiwe. We are in an era where we are being troubled by something we call pornography. Tuko katika nyakati ambazo tunasubuliwa na mambo ya mapenzi mabaya. That has got me off guard my principal. Pornography. You know pornography hata sijui inaitwa nini kwa Kiswahili. Bwana asifiwe. You know as she said that I started thinking in my mother tongue the word does not even exist in my mother tongue. You know because it is an error. Mama kwa sababu ni nyakati zingine mpya. So it is something that is disturbing and it is not disturbing people out there it is disturbing brothers and sisters in the house of God. Hiyo maneno ya pornography haisumbui hata watu huko nje hata ndani ya nyumba ya Bwana inasumbua watu. That instead of you finding yourself going to bed with your spouse at the at the right time we una bakigi pale sitting room when you're scrolling your laptop and doing many other things by the time you're going into bed already your mind has been defined 
child by pornography. Unabaki pale badala ya kwenda kulala na mpenzi wako wakati unaofaa, unabaki pale ukipitia simu yako na uh, laptop yako kwa sababu ya mambo mabaya na ukienda kulala tayari ma, 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 mawazo yako yamejaa mambo machafu. My mambo prayer najiki. for you today it's because you know the right thing to do just like Jonah knew the right thing to do delete praise the name of the Lord delete hallelujah Amen. a few months ago when we, uh, we, we were with another sister here our sister Helen Mukasa and she told us that there are times when the person or rather when you can take yourself to the roof like David did you remember David of old he did David was supposed to be in the battlefield but he found himself in the wrong place when kings were out for battle he was in the house and so definitely when you are in the wrong place you will find yourself straying in the wrong places so he strayed on the roof and saw someone showering the someone who was showering did not have a problem because alikuwa memaliza kazi za mchana lazima aende aoge mwenye alikuwa anaoga she did not have a problem kwa sababu she had finished her work and she was taking a bath the problem was someone who was in the wrong place ilikuwa shida ilikuwa na yule mtu ambaye alikuwa mahali pasipo kuwa panafaa who should have been in the battleground but found himself in the wrong place ilikuwa katika vita lakini alikuwa mahali pasipo fa and how many times do we find ourselves in the wrong spaces ni marangapi marangapi tunajipatanga mahali pasipo fa at because you are, your husband has did not tell you in the morning that you are dressed nicely you are dressed cute therefore every other day you'll be dressing so that your boss can tell you you are smart kwa sababu mume wako hakukwambia unakaa maridadi sasa utakuwa unajipamba ndio mkubwa wako akakwambia ya kwamba unakaa maridadi my sister you are already straying into the rooftop somewhere unatorokea unaenda mahali pasipofa hallelujah and so there is that one where you stray and you find yourself on the rooftop. But our sister Helen told us that there are times when the roof comes. You are just going around your business but the roof decides to to come you are doing your devotions with your phone instead of having the hard copy uh, bible you are doing with your phone then a roof has come ulikuwa unasoma biblia katika simu yako kwa sababu una ile simu ya kweli ya kitabu you are working on your laptop and a roof decides to do what ulikuwa unaelekea zako katika kitabu i don't know how many of us attest to that now what what do you do when the roof comes when the roof comes do not climb on top of it what do i mean by that there are things that will pop on our phones from time to time and we are normally quick with our fingers to hit the button Oh that the Lord would fill us in such a manner. That when the roof has come we will decide he roof mimi sipandi leo. Because when we climb the roof we have already started going the downward trend. Kwa sababu tukipanda pale juu ya mabati ni kwa sababu tumeelekea tumeanza tayari kuingia katika njia isiyofaa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Realize that you can never hide from the presence of God. In Psalms chapter 139 verse 7 to 12. The psalmist brings us to speed. Psalms 139 verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? 
If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. I want to bring it to you today that there is no place you can hide from the presence of God. Jonah thought that by him going to Joppa and then getting a ship and heading towards Tarshish that he was going to disappear from God. But he discovered that he could not hide from from God. The purposes of God had to be accomplished in his life. And as we are sitting in this place today, we have a God who is a merciful God. It does not matter which roof you have climbed on top. It does not matter which ship you've already paid for as you're sitting here. His mercy is saying, no, I'm not letting you go. His mercy is saying, yes, I know you faltered. But I still love you so much, I cannot let you go. That is the God I'm talking about. Today, he is willing to rescue you. For Jonah, he used the big fish to rescue him so that he can bring he could bring him back to a place of obedience and today the Lord is in this sanctuary and he is saying with arms open wide I'm releasing my grace to you I'm not allowing you to be lost I know you've walked away from me but I still love you and I'm willing to go with you and so it is time for us to stop complaining about the storm if you know you created the storm and begin calling on God and praising him because his ways are righteous because only then can he bring you out of the storm he is more than willing and realize I've said there's no place you can go and hide from him there's a sister who once told me that you know what and by the the brother I'm going to talk about sio wale wako hapa bwana asifiwe yule ndugu nitanenea juu yake si mmoja wale wako hapa wako huko nje kwa ile church nyingine bwana asifiwe they are the ones that are in the other church wako kwa ile church ya neighbor the church of the neighbor and the brother comes a calls keeps calling her and keeps telling her you know what this brother this brother was married and the sister was married so, so ndugu anaambia dada that you know what we can begin friendship after all every other person is doing it and you know tutajulikana kuna mtu anatuona there is nobody who will know us nobody will see us my brother my sister there is no place you can run and go to without the lord seeing you bwana asifiwe if he has never ajawai kukuanika ni kwa sababu his mercy is so so much for you ndio maana hujawai anikwa he has not exposed to you because he loves you so much but it's praise. only for a season lakini ni kwa kipindi fulani tu because the bible says that uh, god came and was telling abraham kwa sababu inasema biblia inasema kwamba mungu alikuja na akaambia abraham that ninaenda na hapa sodom na gomora i am going to this place called somora uh, sodom and gomora because i've heard about their sin sasa nimekuja kucheki nionekai iko hivyo i have come to 
church so that I can see if it's like that. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. There is a day when the Lord will come to check you kama iko hivyo hakika kwa maisha yako. God will come to check if it truly like that in your life. <laughs> and you know when he went to check you by the time he was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah was on fire. Wakati alienda kuangalia alipokuwa anatoka pale wale walikuwa wameangamizwa tayari. Oh how I pray today. Naombi langu ni kwamba that we will not wait for the Lord to come and check you on your life. That uh, to, uh, to, to, But that today you will be willing to let go you will be willing to delete you be willing to obey that which the lord is commanding you to do because his mercy is in this house and his mercy is saying no he called you alikuita and to salvation but you have decided <laughs> to go the opposite direction he called you unto righteousness but you've decided to go down to jopa he called you to serve him but you have decided you cannot serve him it is not prestigious to serve him It is not prestigious to love him. Today if you are under the sound of my voice. I want to remind you that he is a merciful God. I came just for that one person who has been in a storm. A self-created storm. Or who has found themselves in a storm because of who they have carried in their boat. If you carried the wrong person in your boat. The Lord is saying throw them out of the boat. <laughs> Today is the time to throw them out of the boat. Tunajua kwa sababu siwezi lipa rent. It's because I can't pay the rent. Lazima nikuwe na huyu sponyo. I must have this sponsor. Who told you that God is a broke God? Uliambiwa na nani? God yako. Uliambiwa na nani that God is broke? Uh, that God is broke? And so you keep having struggles. Even though you have that sponsor. <laughs> Throw them out of the boat. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It may be hard. A hard word. But throw them out of the boat. In the name of Jesus. Throw them out of the boat. You are a married man. Blessed of the Lord. But still you find yourselves in the streets like some vehicles. One day we went for a mission and I'm winding up. We went for a mission. At base. wakati pale base. We went at between 11 and 1 a.m. in the morning. Tunataka katikati ya saa tano na saa saba asubuhi. And we were together with the worship team. We found some vehicles that are parking there are prestigious vehicles machines. Tukapata magari ya kifahali ya kuegeshwa pale. So the guy has left his wife in a prestigious house. Kwa sababu huyo mtu ameacha bibi yake katika nyumba ya kifahali. To come look for a twilight girl in Zimmerman. Kuja kutafuta yule mchana pale Zimmerman. Na waende na yeye kwa makiosk kwa vibanda hapo. Ndio wakaweza kufanya kufanya mapenzi pale kwenye njia kwenye mitaa. And what do they normally say? My wife has grown so fat. I don't like her anymore. Unasema ya kwamba bibi yangu amenona sana simpendi tena. Tumpeleke gym. Why don't you take your wife to the gym? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. My wife wears long dresses. She is not in fashion anymore. Bibi yangu anavaa manguo marefu sana hayuko katika ile fashion. Kama unapenda hiyo mimi ndio nakukimbiza kule si umnunulie umlete. If you love that mini dress, why don't you buy for her that mini? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. May the Lord help us throw them out of the boat. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Some of us are in workplaces where we are not supposed to be. And the Lord has spoken to you. But you're still there holding on. As a result, at the end of the month, you end up with very little because unalipishwa kila kitu kile umevunja. Chupa zote zile umevunja kwa hiyo bani we unalipaga. Na bado unaendaga tu huko. You continue to pay and be charged for even bottles that you have broken and you continue unaendelea kuwa tu pale. We can trust in a big God. Tunaweza amini yule Mungu wetu mkuu. Throw them the, the, the Jonah out of the boat. Ukaweza kurusha yule Jonah nchi nje ya mashua yako. Because his mercy, the Lord's mercy is saying no. Kwa sababu rehema ya Bwana inasema hasha. The Lord's mercy is saying no. Rehema ya Bwana inasema hasha. There is a, a, a singer who sang and said Kuna yule mwimbaji ambaye aliimba akasema hivi Jiheshimu mwana wa Mungu Bwana asifiwe Jiheshimu mwana wa Mungu uh, respect the son of God Praise. respect yourself child of God Praise the name of the Lord There are places that as a child of God you are not supposed to Kuna be found Nani ambapo kama wewe mwana wa Mungu hustahili kupatikana pale Hallelujah I like us to rise up Ningetaka tukainuke You want the Lord to bless you in this year of redigging and repossessing <laughs> as his mercy is saying no all that the Lord is requiring of you is to throw Jonah out of the boat throw him out of the boat and rescue your name na ukaweze kuweza ku aokoa jina lako rescue your name ukaweze kuokoa jina lako usikuwe na sifa mbaya so that you don't have a bad name ati wanasema wale wanaume wale wanawake wa pale deliverance church uh, they keep uh-uh. saying that those women those men of kanisa la ukombozi hiyo ni sifa mbaya kwa injili that's a bad name for the church for the raise the name of jesus it is time to start the upward trend because the lord is saying i have seen you going down but i'm releasing my hand i'm willing to hold you up so that we can walk through this with you in the name of the lord i want to invite the ministry team to come to this place even as we pray and connect to the altar um, and as we decree yaya. and declare that we are throwing Jonah out of the boat na na we are mashuwa throwing zetu. Jonah out of the boat na Jonah and we are zetu. coming running to the mercy seat na kwenye, uh, where we will find grace in time of need tuna, he, he is not saying cleanse yourself he is saying I'm willing to cleanse you. I am willing to cleanse you. He's saying just come as you are. You have been a believer. But you drifted kidogo tu. And you're finding yourself doing things that are not worthy of a believer. The Lord is saying I love you. I love you. If you just come I love you. I love you. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want us just with eyes closed. Reflect on your life. And ask yourself. Where have I drifted? Where have I drifted? Do I pray like I used to pray? Do I fellowship like I used to fellowship? How is my marriage life? How about my relationships? What are some of the things that I interact with? Which Jonah do I need to throw out of my boat? You can come and just connect with someone here.
that they may be able to pray for you. Or maybe you are not even born again. And you want to give your life to Christ. This is the day. This is the day. Masi say